my name is Lubna Hassan. My date of birth is February 17th, 1999. And I was born in Cairo. Why did you immigrate? Honestly, it was after the revolution and my parents just thought it would be best. They already had citizenship. They got it like way back. We were gonna, like the plan was to come for university just to get better education. But when the revolution happened and kind of like school started to shut down and I wasn't in a French international school. So all the like, kind of like the French teachers left and all that. So they thought it would just be best that we start this journey now rather than later. And when did you immigrate? I immigrated, so six months after that. So I landed July 2011. What was it in the revolution that made you immigrate and what happened? It was just like, it was a tough, like it was honestly like a very proud moment and all that, like our revolution happened and like the Egyptian people won and all that. But it was a time where it wasn't that stable. There wasn't really police in charge and there was a lot of unsafety per se in the country. And we had the opportunity to come. So we were like, why not take it for now? And I always, like, I love Egypt and I always go back. I, from the moment we emigrated until now, like I has been missed a year that I go back. But it was, it was just a better education overall because we didn't know how long that will last. Why Canada? I don't think I have an answer to this question. <laughs> it was just my parents' decision. I was 12. I really don't know. Overall, from what I've seen so far, I've been here for 10 years. A lot more safe, and I live in a safe area. So my parents wanted, because they're doctors back home and they weren't going to immigrate with us fully. Mm -hmm. So they wanted us to be in a safe area where they can leave us, me and my sisters, and kind of like rotate between us and go back and forth. Also, I find Canada like one of the least, like there's still obviously racism, but it's not as extreme as some countries are, and especially the US. And it has good education. And once you're a citizen or a PR resident or whatever, you get good benefits and free healthcare. And it was just a well-rounded country. And I think that's what my parents wanted for us. What was it like uh, settling or adapting into the new city? From what I remember, I think it was hard. It was very hard, especially the first year. I came from a French school. I came here in grade, like I started grade eight here. And it was, even though I kind of went to a transition of like a French immersion school, which is not really a French school, but it was like a half half because the other option was not a great school in my area. It was hard because I had to learn the language. I was not a big fan of English growing up. Like I had, I could understand it, but I couldn't really speak it. And the focus wasn't it at school because we had French. And also the people are very different and the humor is not the same and the weather is not great. <laughs> I think the adaptation took like a good two, three years to be okay with living here at first. What kind of struggles or, ch or challenges did you face or do you remember facing settling in or following arrival? It was, from what I remember, it was just like the English for a little bit. It was just that like my classmates, I, there were no like Egyptians or Arabs in my school in general at all. So that, that year of grade eight before I went to high school was kind of tough for me. Like I made friends and everything, but it was just a very different type of friendship that I was used to. I used to play tennis in Egypt. And when I came here, like we kind of still did, but because of the lack of a car at first and my parents not being here all the time, we had to reduce it like once a week and not as competitively. So that was kind of a struggle. But other than that, I think it went pretty smoothly. Other than the, the homesickness and just missing family and all that. Did you have any family here when you arrived? Well, my parents kind of, we don't have any family here at all. But what my parents, well, why they came to Toronto specifically was a friend of theirs immigrated a, like a couple of years before us. And that's who showed us around and all that. And they made it a point to rent an apartment in a place where like the whole, like the building has a lot of Egyptians. 
mm-hmm. but none of them like I had we I made one friend out of them and she's still my friend until this day but it was outside of school uh, did you maintain any connections with Egypt do you have family there do you send any remittances not necessarily money <laughs> my parents still send money here <laughs> but of course I come I I was just in Egypt a month ago so how it worked is that when I came, I was 12. My sisters were 14 and 16. So they were literally, because of their work back home, they would just go back and forth, like keep going back and forth. Like they spent so much money on flights just to be with us, but still have work. And then once my sister, when we were legally allowed to live alone, they would kind of leave us alone for two weeks and the other would come for two weeks and so forth and so forth. But right now, they come maybe once a semester or something like that. And because of the quarantine and all that, it's been difficult. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, we go every summer. And I was just there in the winter break. Like, I go every other winter break. Because my whole family is there, pretty much. So I have to go see them. And I have a lot of friends there as well. And I have a pretty good connection with Egypt considering that I've been here for 10 years. Were there or any associations or institutions that helped you settle in? Settle in? No. Like me and my sister we were like very active. We were looking for Egyptians and um, we kind of like you connect with your own people better you connect with anyone else you know. So we made like a group and we met up with a bunch of people. Not everyone stayed in contact but It was like an Egyptian youth group or something like that. And then in high school, we knew all the Egyptians there and we became very, very good friends and like Arabs too. And on one of them, still my best friend until this day. And then right when I got into uni, my friend who was a year older than me, the ESA actually had like an archery tag event and I ended up going before even I went to Frosh and then the president of the Egyptian students he was like hey are you interested in joining I just I want someone in sponsorship and I was like yeah of course and I've been in the ESA ever since. Can you tell us like what ESA stands for and what kind of opportunities they offer for the Egyptian community? Of course the Egyptian Student Association It's been, I think, six years now. It's our sixth year. Basically, we do fun events, networking events, fundraising events, everything that kind of brings people closer. And hopefully, like, COVID just ruined a lot of our plans. But hopefully later on, like, we want to make something that kind of connects, especially the first year that are coming from Egypt, so that we show them around, help them settle in and have that community. One of the, our biggest events is called the Soiree. It happens every year in February. It would have happened like last week if it were to happen this year. It's a, like a dress up uh, semi-formal or formal event that gets like 300, 350 people from around Toronto that are Egyptians for a fun night, food and dancing and DJ and all that. It kind of makes you feel home at all. It's just a platform for people to connect and we're here if you have any questions and that's how a lot of people reach other students and they ask if they need any help and yeah we're here for it honestly like I made one of my closest friends on that like on the ESA and through it and it's just great to meet so many Egyptians in one place do you keep anything or what do you keep of your home country Do you still know the language? I still know the language for sure. I read, I try, or at least I try to read Arabic novels. Again, like I said, I'm there every year. So, Mm -hmm. and I always, honestly, most of my friends here are Egyptians. And if not Egyptians, they're Arabs and keep the language. I keep the culture. I keep basically everything. You would not know I live here unless you know. (laughs) Do you have any special customs, foods, anything in particular that you carry and keep with you from Masar? Yeah. Well, I'm not wearing it right now, but I usually wear the Egyptian map cut out. 
Mm. Kind of makes me feel like I have a piece of Egypt with me at all times. Mm. And <laughs> funny thing, I always, when I go back, I always get with me like a lot of junk food that like chips and molto, if you know what that is, and some people would know it. Um, like a lot of things from childhood that I like, I just get it here for my friends and for my people. And we, a lot of cheeses, like my parents are a big fan of cheese that they'd always give me for us to store here. Honestly, like our house is a big clubhouse, we call it. Like everyone comes, all the Egyptians and all our friends come here for, in Ramadan to celebrate. Mm-hmm. And in Eid, we always have a barbecue here, like pre-COVID times. And it's a very warm Egyptian house that I would say like most of the stuff here are from Egypt. You mentioned something, it's called molto. It's a food. Mm. It's like a croissant and it has chocolate in it. Oh. But it's a very like big staple in Egyptian. And it's not very good. Like, it's not like people would say it's amazing. It's just that like it tastes like childhood. You know, there's a lot of things that like just taste like childhood. And like a couple of chips that are like, the flavors are not here. They're called chipsy. And I I come with like a huge, like half of my bag is food. <laughs> yeah, like that reminds me. I have like a little, like a jar that has sand and a couple of rocks from mm-hmm. Egypt that I got from like my, the beach that I usually go to when I go back. What beach is it? It's the Red Sea. It's in uh, Rosidr. It's called Rosidr. Not all people know about it, but it's it's my like it's my comfort place. I've been going there for like twenty years. How is your life now compared to when you first arrived? I don't know if it's like a big like it's it's. I don't know if it could be comparable because I was twelve and now I'm twenty two. But mm. in a way, I'm now very very grateful for the opportunity to be here and for learning the things that I learned and I wouldn't take it back. But back then I was like crying to my mom every day to bring me back to Egypt then because you don't really see that far ahead when you're that age, you know? So I would say I'm pretty satisfied. I learned a lot. I learned responsibility, independentness. And at the same time, I go back again. I go back every year, if not twice a year. And that kind of makes me not miss out on anything in Egypt. And I'm still in contact with everyone there. So I kind of get the best of both worlds. What does Egypt mean to you now? And have your feelings changed over time? Well, Egypt to me now means home and where my family is. And it will never be replaceable. At the same time, it did change from back then because all I saw back then was Egypt, Egypt, Egypt. But now that I'm in almost my second year and I'm starting my career, I have to like kind of weigh my options and see where I want to continue with my life. And Egypt is not the only option. I could stay here. I could go back to Egypt. I could. There's a lot of things that could happen that I still have to factor in.